Okay, so in this video, we will introduce and derive the method of integration by parts. So far, we have seen one technique of integration called the U substitution. But this method is not enough. There are integrals that cannot be solved with a U substitution. So sometimes we have to use this method called integration by parts. And here's the result. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And this form is the easiest to remember. So we'll have an integral that will be the integral of u dv. And then we'll go to this form and we'll see through examples why this is sometimes very useful. So first let's derive this. Why is this true? And we'll see that all this is is a clever application of the product rule of differentiation. Suppose we have two functions f and g, and I take the derivative with respect to x of the product of f of x and g of x. Well, I will now apply the product rule. So derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. One thing I'll do, and you'll see why in a second, is I'll just change the order of f prime and g. So I'll write this as g of x times f prime of x. And I will leave fg prime as fg prime. And then you say, okay, well look at this and this function of x. They're both equal, right? This function of x, the derivative of fg equals this. So if they're equal as functions of x, they must have the same integral with respect to x. So we'll integrate both sides with respect to x. So we'll integrate the left-hand side, the derivative of f of x g of x, with respect to x. This will equal the integral of the right-hand side, also with respect to x. This one should be fairly obvious, right? If you remember that the indefinite integral asks for an antiderivative, what will this be equal to? We are looking for a function whose derivative is the derivative of f of x times g of x. This is obviously f of x times g of x. If you differentiate f times g, you get the derivative of f times g. Done. And this equals, well, the right-hand side well, it's not clear what both of these are, but we'll split them up. We can integrate over a sum of two functions. So this would be the integral of g times f prime dx plus the integral of f g prime dx. And this equality really is, as we'll see, integration by parts. But this is kind of hard to remember. So the idea now is we'll make a small change of variables. And the idea, as you'll see, is you'll usually have an integral which is a function of x dx. And we'll choose our u to be a given function of x. And dv will be everything left over. So the idea here is let's make two substitutions. Let's replace u by f of x. Or let's replace f of x by u. And let's replace g of x by v. Now there's one thing that will be missing, will be the f prime of x dx and the g prime of x dx. But let's see what we have so far. If we let u be f of x and v be g of x, then f of x here, this is u, times g of x, which is v. So all we have on the left is uv, looking good. Well, g, as we have said, is v. f, as we have said, is u. So all we're missing now is f prime dx and g prime dx. What are those as functions of u's and v's? Well, there's a derivative, so let's differentiate u and v with respect to x, as both u and v are functions of x. So if I differentiate u with respect to x, to so du over dx, I get f prime of x. 
And of course, if I multiply across by dx, du is f prime of x times dx. And so you can see f prime of x times dx, that's simply du. Well, we'll play the same game with v. v is also a function of x, so we can differentiate v with respect to x. But of course, we get the derivative of g, which is g prime of x. Multiply both sides by dx, and so dv is g prime of x times dx. That's the leftover term here. g prime of x dx is just dv. And so now we can rewrite this equality in terms of uv du dv exclusively. Right? So what do we have now? We have that uv equals the integral of v du my, uh, plus the integral of u dv. And if you go back to the what we claimed was integration by parts, on the left we had the integral of u dv. So let us now simply isolate the integral of u dv by sending the integral of v du on the left hand side. And our conclusion is that the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. And this is integration by parts. The integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. If you go back up, the integral of u dv is indeed uv minus the integral of v du. So this is why this result is true. This was simply the derivation to show you that this is indeed the case. Okay, now a few comments. Actually, two comments. The first one is how do we choose u and dv? All right, let me just rewrite the statement of integration by parts. So we have u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So we'll start with an integral on the left, which will be some functions of x dx. So there'll be something, something with a dx. So we'll choose our u. So suppose we choose this chunk to be u. Once you choose your u, we want our integral to become the integral of u dv. So once you choose your u, you have no choice for dv, as the whole thing must be u dv. Once you choose your u, everything else is your dv. So once you choose your u, you have no choice, everything else is dv. The question is, well, how do we choose u? And also thinking of the dv, because think of it. We want to go from this to this. So we'll know our u, and we'll know dv. And we'll need to find v from dv and du from u. Well, to find du from u, we'll simply differentiate piece of cake. And if we have dv, if you think of it, well, how can you get v? Well, if you integrate dv, you get, of course, v back, right? Think of this as 1 dv. The derivative of v with respect to v is 1, so the integral of dv will give us the v. But there is something that is a bit of a catch here. Once you find an antiderivative, this integral is supposed to give you all antiderivatives. So the question is, do we need to add a plus c here, right? Because ultimately what we have is we know the derivative of v, but the derivative is only unique or giving us a unique function up to some constant multiple. So that's our second question. Do we need to add the plus c? Or can we just say that the integral of dv is simply v and then not the plus c? As we will see in a few seconds, the answer is yes, we can drop the plus c, as no matter which constant we add to our choice of v, it will cancel out in 
the difference between uv and the integral of v du. But the other question is how do we choose our u? And this will, uh, this may not be so clear right now, but as we go through examples it will become very clear. The idea is you choose the function u to be a function whose derivative gives you the greatest simplification. Not the simplest derivative, but as you go from u to its derivative, you want to obtain the greatest simplification. So I'll leave it at that for now. And of course, whatever dv is, since you need from dv to find v, and you get v by integrating dv, whatever dv is, it better be easy to integrate so you can find your v without too much trouble. Okay, now the plus c. I claim that whenever you find your v by integrating your dv, you don't need to add the plus c as it just cancels out. Let's prove this. Suppose we add the plus c. Let's see what comes out of this side. So we would get u, and now we're using v plus c, minus the integral of v plus c du. And I claim that we'll just get back uv minus the integral of v du for any constant c. Well, here we can multiply this out. So we have uv plus uc. And here we can separate the integral, right? We can integrate v du. Of course, we'll have a negative. And we can integrate c du, of course, a negative. OK, so we have our uv, check minus the integral of v du, check. So we can put these two together. And hopefully everything else will just go away. So plus our uc minus, now here c is a constant, so we can pull it out of the integral, so minus c times the integral of du. But if you integrate du, all you get is u plus some other arbitrary constant say c1. Now let's see what happens. So we have uv minus the integral of v du plus uc minus, and if you distribute, you have minus c times u, which is the same as minus u times c, minus c times c1. Well, good news, u times c minus u times c cancels, but we're left with uv minus the integral of v du. But we have this annoying leftover term, oh sorry, which is c times c1. But the key observation here is that c is an arbitrary constant, c1 is an arbitrary constant, so this is still just an arbitrary constant. But in the indefinite integral of v du, once we evaluate this, we will be adding an arbitrary constant. And so we can dump this arbitrary constant in the one that is implicit in this indefinite integral. So we can just drop this arbitrary constant and see that we're left with uv minus the integral of v du, which is exactly what we had to begin with. So the conclusion here is once you have your dv, and you want to find your v from integrating dv, never add a constant of integration because no matter which one you add, it will end up canceling out from the uv and the negative of the integral of v du. So with biparts, we just write that v is the integral of dv, and we drop the arbitrary constant as it serves no purpose. And this will simplify our integral. So that's it as far as by parts. So now in our next videos we'll consider examples and you'll understand better why I say that you choose u so that the derivative gives you not the simplest derivative but the greatest simplification.